And recapping our top story this afternoon, a former senior and now graduate of a New Hampshire prep school who was accused of raping a 15-year-old freshman now could get several years in prison on the most serious charge for which he was convicted. 19-year-old Owen Labrie was acquitted today of the three most serious rape charges against him, three felony charges, but was convicted of three lesser misdemeanor sex assault charges and one count of endangering the welfare of a child. And again, those were all misdemeanors. He was also convicted of a felony charge of using a computer to lure a minor for sexual contact. He cried after the verdict was read and shook his head. Labrie, Owen Labrie had said that he and the girl who was 15 at the time had consensual sexual contact. Sentencing will be in October the 29th, and prosecutors say Labrie will have to register as a sex offender for life. For a closer look at this verdict and the next steps for Owen Labrie, let's bring in NECN legal analyst Michael Coyne of the Massachusetts School of Law. Hi, Michael. Hi, Mike. So um, what did this jury essentially decide? Maybe you could sort of boil it down for us in saying he's not guilty of the three most serious charges against him, but he was guilty of several other misdemeanor counts. Yeah, in essence, the jury found that they did have uh, likely consensual sexual contact. But what can't happen uh, with a minor is that she doesn't have the ability to consent to this sexual activity, and therefore he was found guilty. He's only saved the felony conviction simply because he's only a few years older than she was at the time of the acts. He was 17, she was 15. There's a saving statute uh, within that. Uh, we call it a Romeo and Juliet provision, which means that he's only guilty of the misdemeanor. She just simply couldn't have consented to any sexual activity because of her age. And explain how that provision works so people understand exactly what we're saying here, because the fact that they're within four years in age of each other is a factor. Yeah, exactly, and it's the most significant factor as to why it's a misdemeanor. If uh, teenagers consent to sexual activity, if they are within four years of each other, then it can't be the more serious sexual assault, which would be a felony conviction, which is what we normally think of as the, the statutory rape. Here what it is is it's reduced down to a misdemeanor because it's consensual activity between teenagers who should know better, but as we know from our own experience, do not know better. All right, as far as that computer charge, it is a class B felony, three yep. and a half to seven years, then all the misdemeanors, he could get up to a year for all of those. At this point, how likely do you think it is, Michael, that he would be going to prison? I think it is likely because of the uh, multiple convictions on the various counts. He is a first offender. Uh, he is a, a high school graduate. He wants to pursue his education. He's got a number of factors that are in his favor. But at the end of the day, society has these statutes to protect minors from um, uh, predatory sexual behavior. And that is precisely what the jury has convicted him of. Uh, they found that he used the internet to entice the child and then ultimately had sex with the child, which is a violation of the New Hampshire statutes. I think it's likely he will do some time. I don't think it's likely he will serve the maximum that he faces, which would be seven years. Thinking about uh, the victim in this case now, 16 years old, we did hear the statement from the victim's family and on behalf of her. What do you think that this sentence says to her and to other young women who may find themselves in a similar situation? Well, it, it, what it says is, is that you need, we all need to be more careful. Uh, those of us that are parents need to have some hard conversations with our children, and those that are either male or female that find themselves in these positions have to recognize more earlier on that is there anything they can do and to come forward in the event they, they are. There are no winners in this case. Uh, it's a really unfortunate situation, but hopefully what it allows all of us to do is have more serious and hard conversations with, with our young teenagers uh, that what can happen as a result of uh, a few bad choices along the way. And those conversations extend obviously to places like the St. Paul School, which I know uh, they are reacting very deeply to this and has exposed a culture that existed there. As they should, Mike, and I think it's not just uh, at, at the high school level. I think we see these conversations now at the middle school levels and the like, and hopefully we see them around our uh, kitchen tables and our conversations in our homes because clearly we operate, uh, what well, people have said is, is going back to the 50s, things are so much worse because of the availability of the electronic media and the like that we all have to be a lot more vigilant. This, this is a very sad situation for all of those involved.
It certainly is uh, for all involved. Michael Coyne of the Massachusetts School of Law, NEC and Legal Analyst. Michael, thanks for being here. Thanks, Mike.